Good morning. Hey, everybody. Connie, don't you get discouraged. Don't you get discouraged. You are not allowed to get discouraged. No, ma'am. Cut that out right now. Cut it out. I'm up this morning. Cut it out. It doesn't matter. You're doing the next right thing. You have not had an inappropriate eating episode. You've not overdone anything. You have some pre-existing um, obstacles that cause fluctuations in your weight, if I remember correctly. Let's, let's take the scale and depart from it. Move it yonder. from Get, get it away from us. The scale is not a liar, but it does not, the scale's not a liar. We're not going to do that. But we are going to say this. The scale does not always reflect exactly what it is that we're trying to get it to reflect. When I step on the scale, all, all it can tell me is what I weigh at that moment. It cannot, it does not tell me if my liver is uh, having a hard time processing unwanted body fat which causes a lot of other systems to back up. It, it, it can't know that. It, it can't know whether or not my kidneys and my bladder and my bloodstream are working in unison as I want them to be at any given time to where all of the water and the fluids that are in my blood are being processed out, filtered out, and removed from my system as I would want them to be at that time snapshot picture in time when I want that scale to say what I want it to say. It does not mean that my bowels have emptied themselves to where my scale is going to reflect what I want it to say at that snapshot picture of time. So we're not going to look at the scale, everybody. And we're not going to get frustrated because the scale doesn't tell us what we want to at any given moment in time. Bless God, we can wait from right now. We can wait until we go potty and, to, and, and weigh again. If it, if it matters that much to us, we'll take the scale with us to work. We'll get butt naked in the bathroom stall. Stall after we go to the potty and we go get on that scale, we're gonna weigh again and we'll bless the name of the Lord in the bathroom stall. But we're not gonna let the scale dictate to us whether or not we were good yesterday because of what it says this morning anymore. Let's just forget that thought. Let's forget that notion. Because that scale does not own the right to our, um, to our serenity. Let's put it that way. The scale does not own the rights to our serenity. That is a decision that we can make in our own heart of hearts. And I point to my heart here, but I'm not talking about my heart that's pumping blood through my body. I'm talking about the heart that, that is in my head. The heart that has feelings, not the heart that is a muscle pumping blood. So let's just be encouraged today. Let's encourage ourselves today. Let's get out of our own way. Y'all ever said the serenity prayer? Anybody, any of y'all know the serenity prayer? It's a beautiful prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, courage to change the things that I can and wisdom to know the difference. It's a simple prayer. If you'll memorize, memorize that prayer, yes, Christy, and you'll accept that your ability, your ability, Lynn, your ability, Millie, to get right with God at any moment, It does, it, especially when the world's on fire. When the world's on fire, say the serenity prayer and mean it. Think about what it means. Get out of, God help me, get out of my own way and realize that what's going on in the world is outside of my direct control is outside of my direct control. And look, <laughs> what's going on inside of my body is out of my direct control. Here's what I can control. What I think. What I think, what I believe, and, and what I'm going to do about what I think and what I believe. There is no urgency outside of that. It's an illusion. It's an illusion. Think about those old martyrs that went down on their knees, probably tied up, probably fixing to be stoned. 
and they and, and under the threat of death, under the threat of being stoned, or or harmed, or 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 mangled to the point to the point of the uh, uh, disfigurement, that said, I won't denounce the name of the Lord. I won't denounce my faith. You can kill this old body, but you can't kill what I believe in my mind. I believe I'm going to be 260. If you believe you're going to be 160, nothing can defeat that. Think about the think about Stephen, who was the first man to be stoned that we know of in the Bible, outside of Jesus, who was persecuted for his faith. Think about Stephen. Think about Stephen and how he went. And he looked up and he saw the, the clouds part. I want y'all to think about that when you get discouraged. Put your faith in what you want to put your faith into. Put all your beliefs and all your efforts into that. Say that serenity prayer. Get centered. Find balance. Lord, I'm, I'm excited today. I'm super excited today because it's Friday. I'm super excited today because my little wife's going to get off work and I'm going to get to spend the weekend with her. I'm excited today that I have put together uh, four perfect days. Five's going to be today in a row that is going to, uh, uh, that's going to make me feel even better about myself tomorrow because I got some physical labor to do today if the weather permits. I got some I'm going to get, I'm going to move around. I'm going to pull and push. I'm going to cut some trees. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do some physical labor, which is going to accept, uh, accelerate my weight loss. It always does. Because it's hot, earth, then Hades outside. Humid. Well, I don't know if Hades is humid. I believe it is. I believe, I believe, I believe hell won't be a dry heat. I believe it's going to be a wet heat. I believe it's going to be. <laughs> I believe it's going to be such a heat that, that's miserable. Yes, I did come fired up. I and mean, I'm going to tell you why. I've got a super awesome special class for you today. Everybody needs their pencil and paper today. We're going to, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about Shibboleth hot. We're going to talk about Shibboleth hot. I'm, uh, we're, you're, you all are going to be blessed because Don has agreed to um, have a, an online body fat assessment in, with everybody. And, and you know what? Don's going to benefit from it specifically, but everybody, everybody can, um, everybody's going to do better because y'all understand how this works. So Andrea, if you've never sat through a, a, a body fat assessment, how to read a body fat assessment, I mean, Nelly, anybody, whoever's here today, then today's going to be an extra class. But first, we're going to do what we do every day. It's sup time. Get your supplements in. It's time to uh, the simple things, the accountability of the simple things. Got my, I don't know if y'all can see it, but I got all my waters set up. I can prove it to you. I, can't, I don't think I can hold them all, but here's six of them that I got to drink. <laughs> I got my I got my ACB ready. I got it all. I hope y'all are ready. All right, here we go. You get yours in. If you hadn't already. Woo. All right, let's do it. All right, my favorite part of drinking these waters is not recycling them, although I do, it's smashing that thing and putting it in my, my little bag over here to recycle. Very nice, gives me guidance to reasonable goal weight and all. All right, Teresa's, Teresa's got her numbers and maybe you already know how to, how to calculate all this stuff. One of the, the joys of understanding a proper body fat assessment is, pay attention, do not measure yourself every week and take a new body fat assessment. Number one rule of body fat assessment is this. You take a body fat assessment, it is a snapshot of where you are. I promise you, 
um, there are there are there are forces and power and powers that are working against you. Just like what, I already got fired up, so I'm gonna start out by warning you: if that if, the more body fat assessment you do consecutively, the less and less motivated you'll become. You need to take one, take a snapshot, wait six months and take another. Four months would be the earliest I would suggest. That's three a year. That's three a year. Okay. So if you want to have a maintenance cycle of body fat assessments at max four, four months apart, my suggestion is six months to one a year. It is a snapshot to find some basic information. Now look, Teresa, if you take a body fat assessment when you start and you come up with the, the, the calculations that we're gonna to calculate today, when you get to your number, it's perfectly reasonable to take another body fat ass assessment, okay? It's perfectly reasonable to take a body fat assessment once you get to your goal weight. Now, so, uh, uh, let's just say Millie, if Millie starts today on day one with a body fat assessment and it takes her four months to lose all her weight, then, uh, or let's say three months, because that I already said minimum four months. Uh, let's just say it takes her two months, two months to get her weight off. It's okay to go ahead and take the body fat assessment. Okay. But don't, don't, don't forget, I'm telling you, there could be some discouragement there because as we lose weight, Say that different, Jason. As we lose fat, we also lose some of our muscle. And in losing fat and muscle at the same time, some of these, some of these um, lean body numbers are going to decrease as well. Some of our um, essential fat numbers are going to decrease as well. So our our lean our I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use some terms that are not common yet. They're going to be common after class today. But some of our zero drag numbers and our Shibola tight numbers are going to be different. And that can be discouraging when you're within a two, two let's say a two pound, you're two pounds away from your zero drag weight. If you do a body fat assessment, it tells you you're, you get the two pounds off and it says you got two more pounds. That is, that's not a fun place to be in in your mind, right? We we're talking about being in our mind. All right, I'm, I'm, we're going to use the board today. <laughs> All right, terms to understand. Okay, terms to understand. Um, I am going to teach you about BMI. BMI stands for body mass index, body mass index. When you go to the doctor, your physician, talk about weight, talk about health issues that lead back to weight, talking about our weight, how much we weigh. BMI is probably going to be the number one um, metric that your physician uses for you to understand where you are in relation to the world. Hey, Christy, um, I hope you can stay for class. This is, a, this is an important class. The BMI is that metric that's being used by physicians that, um, that we hear. And a lot of the times it's, it's a, listen, BMI is a slow creeping number. It's a number that, that barely moves. Okay, it doesn't move. You may, you may lose 25 pounds. Your BMI may move a couple of percentage, a, a couple of decimals. I'm not even decimals. That's not the right word either. But maybe you, you lose 20, 30 pounds. Your BMI comes down one point and you're like i wanted it to come down 20 points it's not going to work like that we're going to talk about b uh <laughs> mr bmr stands for basal metabolic rate or basic metal metabolic rate your bmr is your baseline or it is it is how many calories your body burns when it's at rest Okay, remember that basal metabolic rate or baseline metabolic rate, base metabolic rate, BMR, is how many calories your body burns 
when it's at rest. What does that rest mean? It means that I am not expending calories by movement. It means if I were in a, how do I, how, if I were in water and I was, now it takes calories to float. If I were laying in a bed and I was not moving my toes, my fingers, my feet, all I was doing was the involuntary things that my body does. I'm breathing, uh, my heart's pumping, and um, my eyes are blinking. Let's say that. That would be the calories that I burn at rest. So when I get up and walk around, this number changes. When I put forth energy to uh, lift things, to move around, that's when we do cardio and we get extra calorie burns and things like that. It would add to our basal metabolic rate. Basal metabolic rate, I'm laying in bed, watching Gilligan's Island all day long, and that's it, okay? Um, we're gonna talk about our, our lean body, uh, our lean body, you guys, our lean body is the, it's our skin and our bones and our blood and our organs and our sinews. Okay, that's it. So muscles, muscles are in this, our blood, our organs, our sinews and our bones and our skin. Okay, that is our lean body. Think, this is a terrible thing to say. But think concentration camp, okay? If you were to be a person that never ate for weeks on end and was near death, and that was near death, is water in lean body too? Yes, yes. But let's assume that it's, yes, water would be in there too. It's still, it's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a guesstimated figure, but yes. Um, lean body, what it doesn't have, let's just look at it like this. What, it, what the lean body weight doesn't have is fat. Okay, so it's everything but fat. Remove all fat, visceral fat, every bit of fat, no fat, zero fat. You can't live without fat. You're going to be close to death. You're going to be as unhealthy of a, a living person as you can be with no body fat. Body fat is important. It's important. So we don't need to look at fat as if it were a bad thing. But um, at the anyway, that's what lean body is. When you say lean body, you you don't want to be your lean body weight. Everybody with me? When you use when lean body does not mean that's my goal weight. Quite the opposite. We do not want to be our lean body weight. We'll get to that. Okay. Now. You've got, I'm going to abbreviate here. You have essential body weight. The essential, I'm sorry. The essential, ah, it's terrible. The essential fat, I get in trouble for that. My wife always gets on to me for that. Essential body fat is just what it says. It is essential, right? If I were, hang on a second, let's do this. Hey, Siri, define essential. Let's see what Siri says. As an adjective, it means absolutely necessary, extremely important. Did y'all see it? Did y'all hear it? Did hear the next one? No, no, Siri. Did, did y'all hear what, it, what she said? As an adjective, it means of a disease with no known... No, I don't want to hear a disease. Absolutely necessary, extremely important. That's the top definition. Let me see if I can get it to focus on that. There it is. Y'all see it? Okay, so... Essential fat is absolutely necessary and extremely important. <laughs> so when you when you get your body fat assessment, especially women, and I know I've got a lot of women in my group, um, you may think it's a lot. It's not a lot. It's absolutely necessary and extremely important that you have that fat. So when you think about your weight, and you think about your, your essential fat, I want y'all to think that is a prized thing. Let me, let me also say this. When you have that essential fat, you will not see it. If you were to whittle your body down to essential fat and lean body weight only, you will not see any fat on your body. None, not at all. Matter of fact, you would think, 
how can I possibly have fat on my body? Okay. Now, you've got reserve fat. We'll make sure I'm still on the, on the reserve fat is just like a reserve. Uh, let's define fat real quick. Stored body fat beyond essential fat. Essential fat is used for things like um, the breaking down of fat soluble vitamins in our body. Your body, our body, the human body can produce fat from carbohydrates. It can produce fat from any and all nutrients. The body is so fearfully and wonderfully made by God that when we eat and we fail to get the nutrients we need, almost all nutrients, not all, there are some uh, amino acids, there are some things that the body cannot produce, but your liver is specialized. It specializes in making the things that your body needs for itself to be healthy. So if, you're, if you do not eat enough fat, your body will produce fat. It will turn something into fat. If you eat too much uh, of something, since your body knows how to store fat for its own health and wellness, if you eat too much of something that's not fat, your body can actually turn that into fat to store it because it's just that awesome. Because it's that awesome. So think about it like that. If you got extra fat, your body was awesome. It was taking care of you. It was turning nutrients that you ate. Your body said, hey, my, 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 my spirit is sending me calories that I don't need. I think I'll store them for later. But I can't store carbs for later because carbs burn off too quickly. I'll turn it into fat so you can use it later. Put it in what? In reserve. That's right. So the body puts fat in reserves for later. Okay. Now there's a certain amount of reserve fat that that we want to have for health purposes. There's a certain amount of reserve fat that we want to have. We, being the individual, want to have for health purposes. If we were always at our essential fat level, if we were so lean that we stayed right at the maximum part of our essential fat level, anytime we started to whittle into that, we would be malnourished, okay? We would start to be emaciated beyond a healthy, fit person, and you would go into the unhealthy or anorexic side of being too small or unhealthy. So, Reserve fat is a good thing. And then you've got what? Excess fat. Excess fat is just that. It's extra. Uh, excess fat is unhealthy fat. Excess fat is the thing that, that it's where we've gone beyond our reserves and started to actually add fat cells to our body, which is where we start to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Y'all with me? How many have I lost? I've already, I, I, I don't know that I've lost anybody. Okay, so I want everybody to remember this today. And, and I'm, I'm saying this out of love for myself and love for you, okay? Excess body fat's gotta go. But Jason, I've been big all my life. I identify as a big person. I only want to lose a couple pounds. I don't know how to manage loose skin. All of, the, all of those problems and all of those potential ideas in your head that think that those are actually legitimate reasons to be unhealthy are poppycock. They're hogwash. They're they're untrue. They're, they're things that we have, I don't, I, that we have come to, to, to believe, even, even though some, in some sense it's societal now, that it's okay to be unhealthy. And it is okay to be unhealthy if you're okay with being unhealthy, I guess. But 
if you're not okay with being unhealthy on one hand, and you believe that your body image is okay, although it's unhealthy, then you're in a conundrum, right? Then, then you have a belief system that needs adjustment. Then you have then then there are, then I want you to start to 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 pray for God to give you right this. What was it? How many of you remember? Grant me the serenity to accept the things I can cannot change. Right? I cannot change things outside of my control or my influence. Right. God grant me the serenity to, to, to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to what? To change the things I can. You can change your willingness to accept a new you. You can change your belief system to where you know what's right on one hand and you believe something that's wrong on the other hand. And they are, they're intersecting like this. They're not running parallel like this. They are not synergistic. They do not work together. I want to be a big person that's unhealthy, but I want to be healthy at the same time. Those things don't go together. They run into a dead end. We've got to work on that. Okay. Wisdom to know the difference. That's where I'm at. Wisdom to know the difference. When my belief system and what I want, what I want, my belief system don't line up. We got to line those things up. Either I'm okay with being unhealthy or I'm going to change my belief system. That's 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 where we're at. Spotify assessment hopefully will get us there. Whew. All right. Now I've ran, I've ranted long enough. This is a hard lesson to teach short. So maybe we're going to spend some time with him. Maybe you got to revisit this class later. Don, thank you for having the courage to share with the group your um, where you're at right now. Okay, where you're at right now is a beautiful thing. It's important when you, when when you when you take instruction, you get to a place where you're ready to uh, advance your yourself to the next level, and, and you say, "What's next?" Bless God, I'm I'm glad somebody's there to say, Jason, here's what's next. When I ask. So I want to help somebody else find out what's next. I've been there. I've sat through. Let's Travis had to do this with me. We've been, I've been here. I've been here. All right. So first I'm going to show you. Uh, how do I do this? I don't let me get that out of here. Let's see if it'll show you. Shibboleth. Boom. In order to get your body fat assessment, you're going to go to the home page. You're going to scroll down and you're going to go here. When you get to your body fat assessment, this is this is take proper measurements. You're going to you're going to open that and read this. You will need a tape measure to get your body fat assessment. Okay. Okay. So once you get your body fat assessment in, you get your measurements, you're going to type them in to these uh, slots and you're going to hit send. When you hit send, you're going to get a body fat assessment that you can uh, save and print out. You can also choose to, do you want to save this data to your profile in today's journal? So it'll add all these measurements that you take over here in, on this screen, right? On this screen in the, in, in your, uh, this is actually your body fat assessment. It's going to put it in your journal. I'm going to go to my journal and I'm going to show you. It's going to add it here to your weight and measurements. Now, if you're in the new view, you'll see your weight and measurements a little bit differently, but ultimately this is what it's going to look like. All of these are going to be filled out with the exception of your chest because the body fat assessment does not have a chest measurement in it. Why does it not have a chest measurement in it? Because the way we factor in the body fat assessment, it does not factor in your chest. Now, hang on. I'm not a lady. I don't have a chest like a lady has. You have, uh, let's, I, I'm just going to be blunt. Breasts on a woman are fat. Okay. The tissue of the breast is fat. It's, it is what it is. Part of the reason why a woman has more essential fats 
than a man is because they have breasts and, the, and they have shape. And that's okay. That's part of it. You have to know what you want your shape to be. You have to know or uh, come to know what your shape is. Okay, if you're like me and your shape was, I don't even know. I was, I'm oompa loompa. That was my shape. Oompa loompa. I had to figure out what lean looked like on me to, to start to right, get my heart right about what it is that I was shooting for. The body fat assessment does not tell you that. So if you, if you know what size your chest is or filled out how you want your chest to be, you may adjust your end goal body weight to be flattering to yourself what you want that to be, okay? Um, there is a good graphic I've seen about women that weigh one, I don't know, I think it's 145 or something like that. And they were, they were on a scale going up and down. The shorter lady weighed 145, the taller lady weighed 145. They all weighed 145, but they were all different sizes, right? So when you figure in height into a body fat assessment, we have to figure out what that looks like. If you go and all you do is go to the doctor and the doctor says, your BMI has to be this. And you think, well, that means I'm gonna weigh that. And when I weigh that, I look like that. Not that, but that. <laughs> That's what your mind tells you. We have to figure all that out as we go, okay? I, I know you, you, I'm, I'm trying to be gentle as I teach this lesson. Because if not, all it is is a math lesson, okay? Has to, it, it's a math lesson. At the bottom of this page, uh -oh, let me go back one page, sorry. You're going to find here a chart, the results, underweight, approved, overweight, obesity, and, and extreme obesity. This is your BMI chart. Notice that underweight is 18.5 or less, and approved is 18.5. So it's possible, like I was saying, it's possible to be both on the line and both sides. So think about that, okay? Think about what that means to you. Think about what that means to, um, uh, think about what that means going forward, okay? And then you've got approved, 18.5 to 25, and then overweight, 25. So 25, is, is 25 approved or is 25 overweight? Right. Y'all see what I'm saying? Don't get, I was 25.4 for a while on my BMI. And I thought, well, man, I'm overweight. No, I'm approved. And then I lose whatever it took to get down to 25. And I didn't look no different. I didn't feel no different. So this is definitely a place you get in your heart. I want y'all to also see this, body fat level. Why does an essential fat only woman, <laughs> if all I have is essential fat and no reserve fat, then I'm 2.6 to 2, uh, 2 to 6% body fat as a man, but a woman is 10 to 14. Jason already explained that, didn't he? Right? Y'all remember? Women have curves, right? Who's with me? Two people? Y'all say you're with me. Hey, Amen me or something. Okay. Athletes. Now, when you go to the Olympics, have how many of y'all ever seen these girls that pole vault, or these girls that do the high jump, or girls that that, that, that in the Olympics? Those are athletes. Okay. When you CrossFit women, y'all ever seen these CrossFit CrossFit women? Lord Jesus, those women are fourteen percent body fat, or or they're they're in between. 14 and 10. Now y'all get it. Y'all see what I'm saying? If you are wanting to have muscles popping out like a thoroughbred racehorse, if you want to just stand there and lean back and your abs pop out all over the place, then this is what you're looking for, okay? Now, I'm going to introduce to you a term. Are you listening? Zero drag. Okay. You see it right there? Zero drag. Remember, I'm telling you about terms. I'm telling you about terms. <coughs> Zero drag. And I'll, 
Can y'all see that still? Barely. Okay, zero drag is what we call the pinnacle, the very, the very top, the pinnacle of our program. That's what we're all shooting for. Whether you know it or not, if you want to be at the best possible place that you can be and not be an athlete, we all, this is, this right here is the promise thing. This right here, if you can get into those zero drag body fat percentages, hey, when you, we truly mean when you get into maintenance, you can have 12 holidays a month and you can get that weight off like that because your body is a, it is so healthy and it is so uh, efficient at doing what your body does that zero, that when I say the pinnacle, I mean, hey, you need to make small mistakes at the pinnacle and get back to it because your body is working so well, so healthy. Now, the next little area I'm going to talk about, and this is it before we go over, S-H-I-B-B-O-L-E-T-H, hot, perfect for this challenge, Shaboleth hot, right, Shaboleth hot. Everybody wants to be Shaboleth hot, right? Now, I'm going to go to badges, and I'm going to show you. Let me get this right here over here. All right, y'all with me now? Come on. Amen, Jason, I'm with you. We want to get this master badge, yes. But right here is the badge we want, Shibola Pot. Jason, this is the Shibola Pot Challenge 2021. Is that the badge we're going to wear? No, this is not the badge. This badge is the badge you earn when you eliminate, what does that say right there? Excess body fat. What did Jason just get done telling you? Excess body fat's got to go. Unhealthy fat. Remember, remember the the, the lesson. Excess body. You got to. You got to. We all need. I got something in my eyeball. Sorry. We all need to come to this place in our life where we understand that excess body fat is is just that. It's excess. It's, it's not. It's not helping. Nothing. I'm helping nothing. It may help you stay a little warm in the winter, but. What I found is when I'm in EFB, my body fat that was around me like a barrel, that stuff get cold. What insulate? It was. It, it, I get all cold on the outside because my core body temperature had to keep me warm on the inside. But that old fat on the outside ain't got no blood flow. It's itchy, jiggly, and freezing cold. Let's get rid of excess body fat. When you eliminate excess body fat, Don, what we're about to look at, you earn that back. So. In order, what I want to do is eliminate excess body fat, right? When I get my excess body fat gone, what am I? I'm Shibola Tot. That's a, oh, it's awesome. When you get that badge, you should dance. You should dance. And then, listen, everybody, if you want to find out how to get to zero drag and why we don't continuously take body fat assessments, you eliminate one half of your reserve fat, okay? Yes, it's elusive. You will want to eliminate half of your reserve fat. That's why it's elusive though, Christy, because when we don't eliminate half of our reserve fat, every time we gain a pound, we get rid of our hot badge, okay? Now, if you get your excess body fat gone. If you want to have an ab pop out, you really need to eliminate half of your reserve fat. Okay, half of your reserve fat. Everybody got the terminology, right? Because I'm about to race the board. I'm gonna race the board. Everybody got it. All right. Thank you, Don. Here comes your body fat assessment review. Boom. But all right. Number one, Don has 32.63% body fat. Don's lean body weight, I'm going to write it on the board, 111.0. So we're just going to go with 111. When, when Don is in the concentration camp and they ain't fed her, <laughs> that's what she, she, she is just skin and bone, blood and guts, sinews and muscle. That's it. But bless the name of the Lord. When we add her essential fat, we're going to put 53, I say 54, 54 pounds on her. That's essential. That's absolutely necessary, right? 
Is that right? Am I reading this right? No, that's not right. Don't, don't do that to her. She said, don't put 53 pounds fat on me. We're going to put, I'm sorry, 23. 23 pounds of essential fat. That's the absolutely necessary stuff. <laughs> okay. Which brings her super athlete weight, right? Athletic, lean body. When we get to her athlete's weight, do I need to go back down? Right? Essential fat. So that would put her somewhere around 10 to 14%. Better than athletic, she would be weighing 134 pounds. That means that, look here, she looks like one of those people, right? Minus the muscle, unless she's doing fitness activity, she's going to be lean, as lean as your pole vault person, okay? That, that's what I'm trying to say. Athletes are, when they're healthy enough to do exercise and actually maintain those uh, uh, extended runs and whatever, you have to have fat on your body to do that. So we're going to take Don's reserve fat, which is, I'm going to round up, it's 30 pounds, and we're going to add 15 pounds to that. This is one half of the reserve fat in her assessment. Now, if we add that 15 to it, we've got nine, four, and one. Okay. This number is Don's zero drag. Are y'all with me? Exactly. It's, of course, it's hard to maintain. Your body is constantly trying to give you some reserve fat because we need it. Because at any given time, you're going to go run a mile and you're going to be in a calorie deficit. And when you're at your essential line, your body says, hey, I don't need to get rid of any of this. It's essential. Let me store some fat for for this run, let me start, look, and you know what? You can't see it on your body. When you get below the halfway mark, when you get below the halfway reserve mark, you start to lean out even more. So you don't just have the top uh, part of your abs show, and you start to get see the abs below those. Your obliques start to show, right? Now, if you're like me, you look like a melted candle when that happens, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You just tuck that skin into your belt, and you just carry on, right? I, I'm 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 being a little funny, but I'm being serious as well. If if I were going to be a super athlete, I would have skin to deal with. That is just a fact. There is no shame in that. Outwardly, because why? Because I put the skin. I stretch the skin. Okay. Now this is how I'm going to use this. Now Don, listen to me. If you want to be zero drag, that's where you want to try to maintain. If you need, if it looks at fit when you've got some reserve fat left over, right? It's okay to drop an extra five pounds. So when you go and have a three day holiday and gain five pounds, bless God, you still zero drag. That may be the maintenance strategy you want to have. Everybody take this body fat assessment and run the numbers the way I just said. You take what? This is lean body. You add what? Your essential fat. You come up with what? Not healthy, super skinny, need to add some fat. You take half of your reserve fat number and you come up with a number that is what? The pinnacle of our program. The pinnacle meaning we are not really telling anybody to try to be anything more than this. As a matter of fact, anybody that's ever got the Shibola top badge, the language we use, and I'm almost done, the language we use is something like this. Yes, yes, Andrea, lean body plus essential fat plus half of the reserve fat equals zero drag, okay? If you add all of your reserve fat, then you will come up with your Shibboleth hot threshold, okay? You'll get to your Shibboleth hot threshold. Or just eliminate all excess body fat from your assessment 
and you will be at shibboleth height. Shibboleth height here, shibboleth zero drag here. Okay, this is where maintenance happens between height and zero drag. That's, that's where maintenance happens. If you want to maintain an elite healthy body like Travis, like Sasha, like Kim Danke, then you're gonna take from height down to the zero drag and you're gonna figure out a maintenance strategy there. Like Patricia. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's what we do. Can I tell how to email me again? Absolutely. Jason, J-A-S-O-N, W-W-N-A, as in North America, at gmail.com. Jason, W-N-A, at gmail.com. All right. Is BMR number daily? Yes. Great question. Your basal metabolic rate, um, let's just go and look at hers right quick because uh, this, is, this is really an awesome class. It's way too long. I'm sorry about that. So for Don, for Don to uh, actually do, uh, do well, she has to keep her calorie intake per day below 1,400, four, I'm sorry, 1,418 1, calories. Okay. If she keeps her calories below that, she is in a calorie deficit. Now, Jason, I go and I run this and do that, and I, I'm not watching Gilligan's Island, so I know I burn more calories than that. Okay, so you do. Are you relying on those calories to keep you in a calorie deficit, or are you going to use a computation based on the measurements of your body to usher or ensure that you remain in a calorie deficit and get the results that you want? Now, these results are guaranteed. Why are they guaranteed, Jason? I don't understand. Because your body, our bodies, burn those calories at rest. It has, it's, it has, to, has to do with your bone size, your frame. It has to do with how much muscles on your body due to your height and your measurements, okay? And your age, all that's factored into the body fat assessment. It is not, it's scientific, but it's not 100% accurate. So if you stay below that number, reasonably, ladies, somewhere between 800 to 1,000 calories, your body should be dealing with those, the rest, those 400 calories that we're not consuming through our lips each day. We might, we might actually deal with that um, as body fat, okay? Jason, my doctor says I can't. If I, do, I won't. I'm not getting enough calories. You are. Your metabolism burning 400 calories of fat off your tail. Well, that's what we want. If you got a fat tail, I don't have a fat tail. Burns off my love handles. My tail. I already burned that off long ago. Burned that off long ago. All right. All right. I got. I got to go. I've kept you way too long for a class this morning. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, any questions, send questions, concerns, assessments, whatever you want me to look at to jasonwna at gmail.com. I'd love to help you with that. Connie, everybody's praying for you. Everybody's here with you. We're all in the same struggle. We're all different, but we're all the same. We are in this together. Chibola Pot, you guys, that's what we're doing. Chibola Pot 2021. All right, I'm going to end that.